do you have some plans? Do you consider yourself a planner? I think everybody kind of has some plans. Uh, maybe the, the level of detail in your plans is different from other people, but you plan in all sorts of aspects of your life. You have your own family plans uh, of where you're going on vacation, when you're going to see your, your parents next, when you're going to see your kids next, when you're going to see your grandkids next. You, you have family plans about how many kids you want to have. You, you have family plans of where you want to live or what kind of house you want to live in or or what kind of job you're going to have uh, to support your, your family. Uh, you have professional plans. You have careers that you want to, to chase down. You, you have uh, a plan of where you hope that you'll be in, in five or ten years. Uh, you have maybe a goal in mind of where you want to get to. Um, you, you have all kinds of, of plans. Um, sometimes you're planning for your week, sometimes you're planning for your month, sometimes you're planning for your year, but, but you plan things out. And, and the Bible says that's a good thing. God encourages us to be planners. He encourages us to be wise stewards of the gifts that he has given us so that we can uh, glorify him in everything that he has given us and, and use those blessings uh, for good purposes. But as with all good things, uh, they can be twisted by the devil. And as with all good things, uh, because we still carry a sinful nature with us, uh, and because our hearts are curved inward, meaning that we are naturally kind of selfish people, uh, we can twist some of these good things into things that are, are bad. In fact, God says that there's a certain attitude that he would love for you to, to have when it comes to planning. And there would be a certain attitude that would be sinful, that, that he wants you to avoid when it comes to planning. And, and the writer James is the one that talks about this. He says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into this or that city, spend a year there, do business and make profit. You do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? Indeed, it's a mist that appears before for a little while and then disappears. Instead, it is better for you to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and we will do this or that. But right now you are boasting in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. What can happen when it comes to the planning is that when your plans go right, when you plan something else out and it actually happens that way, you can start to get arrogant about it. You can start to believe that you are the one in control. You can start to believe that you are the source of your blessings, that your life turned out the way that it has because you've made great decisions. And because you have been such an excellent planner and have followed that plan to a, a T, instead of having thanksgiving for the blessings that God has given you. And, and so in place of, of having thanksgiving in your heart for the blessings that God has given you, it, you instead are boasting in your own goodness, in your own ability to plan and make things happen. And what James says, and what God wants for you is to approach everything with humility. And James says something that, that is really humbling. He says, your life is a mist. It's here today, gone tomorrow. Those plans that you, you think are so big, those plans that, that you think are, are going to, to make your life so great, are, they're, they're a mist. They're here today, gone tomorrow, just like your life is here today, gone tomorrow. Uh, people that, that have even lived a, a life of such consequence that the history books remember them, they maybe remember one or two things about them, and the rest is lost. And, and millions and millions of people who have lived over the years are not remembered at all. And that's to say, what you think is important now, in the grand scheme of things, may not be that important. But the Bible does tell you what truly is important. The things that last for eternity, things that last not just for this life, but carry on into the next. And that's the things that only God can give. He can give you life. He can give you salvation. And he can give you forgiveness of sins. He can give you blessings that will last here and to eternity. And he has given you those all through Christ. And so we can approach our lives uh, with, with two things in mind. 
First, the, the importance of the, the blessings, the heavenly blessings that God has given us, those are, are the most important thing because those last on to eternity. Those are not a miss here today and gone tomorrow. And the second thing we can carry with us as we make our plans is to say, if this is the Lord's will, he is the one in control. He is the one that knows what's, what's best for me and what's important for me. And I'm going to approach all of my planning and everything that happens with thanksgiving instead of boasting, with humility instead of pride. And I'm going to submit to the Lord's will and ask that his will be done.